Hi, I'm Lisandro Mathers, the Head of Sales and Marketing at Angels and the General Manager of Angels Brazil. And today I will show you what's new in the just released version 4.2.0 of Helix, Angels open source CFD software. In case you still don't know Angels and Helix, let me quickly present it to you, and if you do, feel free to skip this part. Angels is a private company that develops CFD software using open source technology and also offers a range of services including consultancy, custom CFD code development, HPC on demand and training. Helix is one of the open source CFD software solutions we offer and it's used by more than 200 companies worldwide. One of the reasons for Helix success is its open source nature. That means all Helix customers can fully access its source code. But also another great value associated to the fact that Helix is open source is its unlimited scalability. Unlimited scalability means that you, as a CFD user, can run as many simultaneous simulations in as many computer cores as you have available, without the need to acquire extra HPC licenses. And basically, that's what Angels is here for, to help you unlock the full potential of your CFD enterprise applications by the use of open source technology. Helix version 4.2.0 includes several new features and improvements, and most of them were focused in this version on improving automation and user experience. The first feature I will talk about is our Python journaling system. In previous versions, we released a feature which enabled users to record any action performed in the graphical user interface into Python scripts that could be then used for automation purposes. However, users needed to close the GraphQL user interface and run such Python scripts using the terminal user interface. Now, in version 4.2.0, we significantly improved this feature by creating the Macro Library, a new interface to manage macros in a much more organized way, which also allows users to run these macros within the GraphQL user interface. Still in the spirit of automation and customization, we introduced a new Python API which enables users to create customized GUI components, and that's one of my favorite new features in this version. As an example, users can create a simple calculator to calculate the necessary boundary layer prism settings based on a desired Y plus value and apply such settings to create the mesh prism layers. To increase the existing value that our customers get from the unlimited scalability of our software licenses, now users can open multiple instances of Helix within the same machine, consuming only one unique license. Lastly, we developed an interface to integrate Helix to the Turbo Machinery Design software CF Turbo. Such an interface allows automatic setup and run of turbo machinery cases in Helix for different machine types, including pumps, hydraulic turbines, fans, compressors, and gas turbines by the press of a single button. In Helix, users can prepare, set up, run and post-process their CFD simulations by navigating through the Mesh, Setup, Solver and View tabs. In Helix version 4.2.0, we introduced the Geometry tab. The new Geometry tab allows users to manage in a much more flexible and organized way the geometry files used in their simulations. Users now can add all necessary geometry files and later decide which ones they want to use for generating the mesh, to set up the case, or for monitoring purposes during post-processing. Now, in terms of mesh generation, this version introduces a very significant and very useful feature called Multi-Mesh. Multi-Mesh is a completely new interface for mesh generation, which allows users to generate multiple region meshes independently of each other. In previous Helix versions, users had to create multiple region meshes in multiple steps by importing and merging different meshes. Now, users can mesh multiple regions within the same Helix instance consecutively or simultaneously. Take as an example a heat exchanger. There is a hot and a cold region. To mesh both regions separately, we add a new mesh settings, 
rename them accordingly. Add the geometry files corresponding to the code region to the code mesh settings and do the same for the hot region. Then we apply the mesh settings for each region, such as refinement surfaces, prism layer settings, and create cell zones for porous media modeling. And when it comes to generate the mesh, we can generate both simultaneously or one after another. Let's first mesh the code region. And when the mesh for the code region is finished, we can mesh the hot region. Other features of the Helix Mesh Generator algorithm include an interface to align the base mesh to a user-defined local coordinate system, an improved treatment for baffles, like the removal of isolated regions when generating meshes for zero-thickness surfaces, and the addition of a 2D feature edge refinement for zero-thickness baffle edges, which helps reducing the aspect ratio of cells around edges where it is difficult to achieve good mesh quality using the standard 3D refinement approach. In terms of case setup, we have implemented a few new boundary conditions. The first one is the non-conformal coupling, NCC, which is a new methodology for coupling patches that presents a few advantages in comparison to the AMI coupling approach. In summary, the NCC approach creates virtual faces between the boundary patches to be coupled, which are the result of the intersection of each boundary patch faces. In this way, the new faces are identical on both sides of the coupling patches, resulting in a perfect one-to-one -one match when calculating fluxes and other finite volume-related variables. Therefore, full conservation and great accuracy is maintained, while this is a non-issue with the arbitrary mesh interface approach. Even though the NCC approach can be applied for both static and dynamic meshes, including quite complex problems, in this version, the NCC has been implemented for static boundaries only. Another boundary condition introduced in this version is the server rack outlet temperature. When simulating data centers, it's common to model the server racks as a black box with a CFD outlet boundary condition, representing the flow entering the racks, and with a CFD inlet boundary condition representing the flow leaving the racks. When using such an approach, the CFD inlet temperature representing the flow leaving the racks is calculated by the energy flux due to the density power of the racks. That works perfectly for steady state regimes. However, for transient simulations, it is known that the effect of the heat absorbed by the mass of the solids inside the rack needs to be taken into account. And that's exactly what this boundary condition does. We have also expanded the option for users to input flow rate at inlets in other units, rather than just cubic meters per second, since it's quite useful to use different units for several applications. Finally, for dual heating multi-domain thermal simulations, users can now employ a time-varying function for defining electric current applied to solids, as shown in the animation. Another feature that we introduced is the ability to map transient field data on cut planes to boundary conditions of more simplified models. To reduce simulation costs, it is possible now to map the solution from the full model to a boundary condition of the reduced model. This is done in the graphical user interface with a two-step approach. First, the user needs to sample the transient field data on a given surface on the full domain, and then the user applies the stored data to an inlet boundary condition on the reduced domain. In Helix version 4, we introduced the unified solver framework, which was a significant refactoring of the code, providing a much more flexible and modular structure in terms of multi-physics problems. In version 4.0, we introduced the capability of solving multi-phase flows inside a multi-region case, such as a CHT analysis. For example, in this animation, we see a hot solid sphere being cooled down by the cold flow of a water stream into an air domain. In Helix version 4, we also introduced a new interface to add completely independent reference frames, which could be used for setting up CFD simulations with quite complex motion. 
we now introduced the ability to use such reference frames in some monitoring functions such as forces, lift drag and probes. As an example, the force on the rear surface of an Ahmed body with rotating oscillating motion can now be monitored on the global or fixed reference frame or with respect to a moving reference frame relative to the moving body. Still regarding monitoring functions, we added support to calculate statistics of a given field between a pair of existing functions. With this new feature, users can now monitor, for example, the pressure drop between two probe locations by selecting the difference operator. In terms of visualization of the results, we focused on the development of a set of very useful post-processing tools for turbo machinery applications. Let's break down what the new Turbo tool offers. First, span and blade-to-blade -blade plots. These tools allow for detailed analysis from the hub to the shroud, offering a comprehensive view of blade performance and flow characteristics across the span. Streamwise and meridional plots. With these plots, you can visualize the flow from the inlet to the outlet and perform circumferential averaging, giving you a clear picture of the flow dynamics along the machine's length and across its meridional plane. Turbo 2D Charts These charts are instrumental in analyzing specific aspects like blade loading at various spans and evaluating flow properties from the hub to the shroud and inlet to outlet, all while utilizing circumferential averaging to refine the data. Moreover, we have implemented the LIC surface representation for vector fields. This feature significantly enhances the visualization of flow patterns making complex flow behaviors easier to understand at a glance. To further support our users, we have ensured that scenes from Helix can now be exported in PVD format, allowing seamless visualization in the widely used open source tool Paraview. With respect to Helix Adjoint, one of Helix additional modules for shape and topology optimization, we introduced an objective function called threshold pressure, useful for cavitation risk analysis. In Helix Coupled, users could already use a pseudo-time-step approach to speed up convergence. In this version, we introduced an adaptive relaxation option that speeds up convergence even more when compared to the standard approach. Finally, with respect to Helix Marine, our additional module for ship design applications, we introduced the actuator disk model for self-propulsion studies. The body force model takes as input the open water propeller curves and calculates the ship self-propulsion point based on the actual measured resistance force. In summary, this version 4.2.0 of Helix focused a lot on improving performance and usability to enhance even more user experience with our software. All our customers can already download Helix version 4.2.0 in our customer portal. And if you're not a customer, but you want to learn more about Angis and Helix, feel free to contact us at our website or you can always reach out to anyone from Angie's team through LinkedIn. We will be more than happy to talk about CFD with you. Thank you, and I see you in the next Helix release.